Hey everybody, welcome to another Games Infuriate Me to No End, and the first of what might actually be quite a lot of games that were on the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. This is Tribe's Aerial Assault, which is the PlayStation 2 exclusive entry in the Tribe's series. You may know Tribes from the most recent entry, which is Tribes Ascend, which unfortunately they stopped any development of, and I think they've actually shut down the servers by this point, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, if you're not familiar with the Tribes series, then understand that it's actually a pretty long-running series that was an offshoot of Star Siege, which was itself an offshoot of the Metal Tech series. The original Tribes was Star Siege Tribes, and it released in 1998, and its sequel, Tribes 2, came out in 2001. And they were both PC-exclusive first-person shooters that focused very heavily on mobility, as well as, of course, their online play. It was actually a pretty radical departure from the games in the series that preceded it, because Metal Tech, Earth Siege, and Star Siege were actually more vehicle combat games, and then you get to Star Siege Tribes, and all of a sudden it's a first-person shooter where you got jetpacks, and it's very fast and very precise. And the scale was something that was basically unheard of at the time, because even though computers at the time couldn't really support it, technically the Tribes engine allowed them to have up to 128 players on a single server. Now, I unfortunately never got a chance to play the original Tribes and Tribes 2 during their prime, but I did get to play a bit of Tribes 2 a few years after it was considered relevant. Relevant, and there were still people playing it, and it was pretty fun, although I was frankly absolutely terrible at it. And I did get a chance to play a fair bit of Tribe's Vengeance, although by the time I got a hold of it, unfortunately, the servers were all pretty much dead. The Tribe's fan base just never really latched on to Vengeance like they did with Tribes 1 and especially Tribes 2, so it just kind of ended up sputtering out before it even really got a chance to get off the ground. And then Tribes Ascend came out, and it was actually pretty good, apart from the business model, which was absolutely horrible. They decided to make it a free-to-play game, and it ended up completely demolishing what semblance of balance the game had, at least until they rectified that much later on, basically when they decided to pull the plug on the game. But of course, by then, it was was just too late and Tribes Ascend ended up dying out anyway. Now interestingly enough, Hi-Rez Studios decided to release all of the Metal Tech games that they had the rights for for free. So now Metal Tech, Earth Siege, Earth Siege 2, Star Siege, Star Siege Tribes, Tribes 2, and oddly enough, Tribes Aerial Assault are all freeware now. But what you're seeing in this video was not recorded from the freeware release. I actually ended up finding a copy of this at my local bargain bin for about two or three dollars and decided to just pick it up for collecting purposes. Purposes, and I actually recorded this based off of that version. And by now, you've probably noticed throughout the footage that I have been getting my ass completely handed to me this entire time. And you may be thinking to yourself, oh, DW sucks at first-person shooters, ha 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 ha. Now, obviously, if you've seen other videos on first-person shooters that I've done, you know that I'm not terrible at first-person shooters. I am a moderately decent to actually good player, depending on which individual game we're talking about here. For example, you'll have situations like with my Quake Champion, video where people were giving me all kinds of shit for being terrible at Quake, and I readily acknowledge that I am terrible at Quake. I mean, I do perfectly fine in the single-player components because that's what I primarily played with Quake. I never really got into Quake Deathmatch even though I do enjoy it. And while I consider Quake 3 to be the finest Deathmatch game ever made, because I'm not really a big fan of free-for-all Deathmatch, I just never really committed things like strafe jumping and plasma climbing to muscle memory and the only one that I really made decent use of was rocket jumping. Thus, when I play a Quake game and I record it for the channel, it looks like somebody who may have some grasp of the mechanics, but is not particularly good at executing them as playing, and thus you'll end up with the people who are utterly convinced that you must be a pro to review Insert Game Here, who will shriek and cry that you're playing the game wrong, and you have no idea what you're doing, and you have no business reviewing the game or whatever the case may be. Now at this point you're probably like, look DW, you've been on a tangent for a while, just get to the point already. What does that have to do with Tribes? Well, Tribes is one of those series where I know how to play them, but I'm not good at them. You have to understand that Tribes is insanely fast-paced, to the point where even people who work on the speed of Pro Quake actually often have trouble playing Tribes. A lot of the advanced movement in the game has to do with building up a huge amount of momentum and thus a huge amount of speed, but also doing it with the combination of the low friction as well as the jetpack. 
And because everything is so incredibly fast, you also need an extremely high level of precision. And I just haven't built up quite that level of skill, because I haven't been exposed to enough tribes multiplayer for it to really work. And even with that level of skill holding me back, I still enjoy the living hell out of the tribes games, particularly Tribes Vengeance because it has a single player campaign that I can actually play. And that of course brings us to Tribes Aerial Assault, because this was a console game, which meant that you had to be able to play it offline, otherwise you basically couldn't market this to just about anybody. The idea of a console exclusive, multiplayer only, first person shooter in 2002 when this game released was completely unheard of, for very good reason. Internet multiplayer on consoles didn't really pick up until the later parts of the OG Xbox and PS2 generation on into the early Xbox 360 and PS3 generation, because by that point, internet infrastructure was finally getting to the point where a much wider audience could reliably play games online. Up until we got to that point, split-screen multiplayer was the norm, and it was generally considered a side mode compared to the single-player campaigns of whatever game you were playing. The thing is, Tribe's Aerial Assault isn't really built that way. It is clearly trying to push its multiplayer over everything else, because the single player is just multiplayer style matches with some narration over it. And that, combined with it trying to port the gameplay experience of the Tribes games over to the PlayStation 2, leads me to the following query. Who in the unholy fuck thought this was a good idea? There was absolutely no way in hell a Tribes game could ever work on console. It is too fast-paced, and it requires way too much precision. Two things that the consoles are physically incapable of handling. A console's gamepad will never reach the level of speed and precision that you can get from a keyboard and mouse. That does not mean that gamepads are inherently inferior to keyboard and mouse in every regard. They're perfectly fine when it comes to things like platformers or action-adventure games or role-playing games or things of that nature. It is specifically the domain of first- and third-person shooters where you are going to run into this problem. Now, there are certainly ways of mitigating this, and even back in the mid to late 90s, they understood that, because they knew what they were working with. You'll end up with games like GoldenEye 64 and Perfect Dark, which have only one analog stick to work with, so they made sure that the enemies are fairly sluggish to respond, and you get some very hefty aim assist, as well as almost never being required to do anything that requires any sort of speed or precision. They developed the games with the limitations of the hardware in mind, and with those limitations in mind, they found some ways of making it work, and you end up with some absolute classics as a result. That's not how Tribes Aerial Assault was developed, though. It was developed with the mentality of just porting the gameplay of the PC games over to the console and thinking that they would get a bunch of sales from it. At least, that's what I'm guessing. Because trying to comprehend the thought process that went into developing this unmitigated, disastrous pile of shit is enough to give you an ulcer. And it only gets worse when you boot the game up and start messing around with it, because you'll start the single player and go into the tutorials and immediately realize that there is something horribly, horribly wrong with the controls. It starts things off with a tutorial that gives you all the basic movement controls, and the first thing you learn how to do is to look around. And it tells you that in order to look up, you need to pull the right analog stick back. That's right, the default controls have the look on the y-axis inverted. You see, those of you who aren't as familiar with this particular era of gaming may not understand this, but in the days of the PS2, and of course the OG Xbox and the GameCube, there weren't really standardized console first-person and third-person shooter controls. Now, of course, we have to cut the original PlayStation and, of course, N64 some slack because the N64 only had one analog stick, and on the PlayStation 1, the DualShock controller was not standard. It didn't come with the consoles until much later on, and if a game did support it, it was more often than not kind of spotty with how it did so. You would end up with a lot of games using the insanely awkward control scheme of using the left stick for moving forward and backward and turning left and right, and the right stick being bound to looking up and down and strafing left and right, which, if you've never used that control scheme before, is insanely awkward. 
And you might find this absolutely baffling if you're used to the modern control scheme, but when that control scheme was introduced with Alien Resurrection on the PS1, which admittedly was an awful game, let's be fair, it was actually met with backlash. People thought that the control scheme that is now the standard for first-person shooters on console was an awkward, clumsy, and cumbersome mess. And funnily enough, in a blinding display of hypocrisy, a lot of those same people would turn around and say that Halo was the best thing since sliced bread because its controls were just so intuitive. Anyway, the point I'm making with regards to Tribe's Aerial Assault is that not everything that we consider no-brainers today was a no-brainer back when this was being developed. So you do have a few slightly annoying legacy quirks, like the look controls being inverted. But here's the thing. That's easily fixable and just mildly annoying if you weren't expecting it at the start. All you have to do is flip a switch and your look controls are back to normal. The same can't be said for any of the other controls, however. I'm going to show you a screenshot that I took of every single one of the controller layouts that is available in Tribe's Aerial Assault, and I just put them next to each other so you can see them all in one image. Observe, there are four of them, configurations A, B, C, and D with A being the default control scheme, and the one that you are locked to using in the single player campaign. If you play bot matches, you can select any of these four, and of course you can do the same if you play online. But on the single player campaign, you are only limited to configuration A. Just take a moment to observe them. Look at the different controls, and you will probably immediately see why I have a problem with this. I'll just give you a moment to take a look. Do you see the problem? No? Well, just take a look at the positions of the fire, zoom, jet, and jump buttons. The fire button is on the left side of the controller, and the zoom button is on the right side, by default. The jet button is on the right side of the controller, by default, and the jump button is on the left. And keep in mind, like I said before, there is no way of changing this control scheme in the single-player campaign. You can only change it in the online mode and in the bot matches. So if you decide to use one of the other configurations for the bot matches and you decide to play the single player campaign all of a sudden, then you're going to find that none of your controls are doing what you want them to do. You'll be zooming in when you think you're going to be shooting, you'll be jumping when you think you're supposed to be jetting, and if you're using one of the control schemes in the bot matches and the online that has the entire left side of the controller swapped with the right side, then you're going to be in for a real rude awakening when you start playing the single player campaign, and all of a sudden, instead of looking around, you're moving, and absolutely none of the face buttons and a very good chance that the shoulder buttons are just not doing anything that you're expecting them to do. I can't think of a single other console game that has this problem. Every single other one that I've played, at least to my recollection, has the ability to swap the configuration of your controller in both the single player and multiplayer components to the same exact control schemes. I just can't comprehend what possessed them to do this, and more importantly, what possessed them to have the default be such an unintuitive and fucking stupid control scheme. I mean, to give you an example of how this might look if you tried it on a keyboard and mouse, WASD would still be moving around, and the mouse would still be looking around, but then you would go to click the left mouse button to shoot at something, and instead of shooting, your character would jump. And if instead you wanted to aim down your sights and shoot at something, you would have to hold the E key to aim down the sights, and then press Q to shoot. And then when you realize the errant stupidity of those controls, you would go to change them and find that in the options menu there's only the ability to change which key is the shoot and aim button, so you'd either have Q or E as shoot or aim respectively, and you might be able to swap the movement controls over to the mouse and swap the looking and aiming controls over to WASD. It'd be one of the most ridiculous things you could possibly imagine. But because it's a console game from 2002, basically nobody batted an eye because there weren't, air quotes, standardized controls back then, even though there was basically some form of that standardized controls in just about every first-person shooter after Alien Resurrection came out. 
So if you're used to that control scheme, you basically have to unlearn every last bit of muscle memory you have achieved with that basic control scheme that is used in just about every other modern first-person shooter ever these days. And even back then, that was still a relatively common control scheme. It just wasn't always the default control scheme. So by the time this came out, there really wasn't an excuse for such clumsy controls. And to make it worse, the controls are directly inhibiting your gameplay experience. One of the big things you can do in Tribes is skiing, which in the older games was basically holding down the jump key. And this allowed you to basically bounce and slide around the environment and maintain your momentum going forward, and you would adjust it by using the jets and, of course, doing things like blasting off of the spin fuser and all sorts of things like that in order to control how fast you were going and which direction you were going in. Meanwhile, to even attempt something like that on the gamepad here because of the way the controls are set up, you basically need to have your middle finger on the fire button, you need to have your index finger on the jump button of above it, so you got both of those fingers on your shoulder buttons at all times, and then you have your other index finger always on the jet button. And while I guess you could use your other middle finger on the zoom button, there's not really any reason to, and that just makes it even more clunky and awkward. In fact, trying to hold the controller like that eventually makes my hands cramp up. In fact, I used to try to hold the DualShock controller in that way to begin with because that's what always felt like it was intended to be held like, but then it always cramped my hands up and it always made me miserable, so I ended up hating the DualShock controller. And to this day, the only DualShock controller that has been even the slightest bit comfortable to use has been the PS4's DualShock controller because they finally decided, hey, our controller is extremely non-ergonomic. Maybe we should do something about that. And even that controller still has its own problems, but that's for a different discussion entirely. So at the end of the day, you are left with clunky and awkward controls, no matter what configuration you have set up in this, and no matter whether you have decided you want to use inverted or non-inverted controls. And then if you dare to try to play the single-player campaign that you ostensibly got this game for, then you are greeted with the only configuration being one of the worst ones in the selection of four that's available available to you, and you're never really going to get used to it, because to do so, you have to completely retrain yourself to use an absolutely awful control scheme, and you are not going to force yourself through that, I guarantee you. But the funny thing about all that is that the controls aren't even the worst part of the game. The worst part is that they just took the gameplay style of Tribes on PC and tried to make it into a PS2 game. And the only two things they did to try to mitigate the massive problems that introduces to a system that is not simply not built for, but also physically cannot handle the levels of speed and precision required for that gameplay style, were to give you a button that allows you to lock the reticle onto an enemy and track them for at least a brief amount of time in order to try to get a few shots in on them, and to give you an auto-aim system that is so completely insane that it actually renders the lock-on mechanic completely moot. Because just look at the gameplay footage that I have been showing you this whole time. You'll see my shots are careening all over the damn place, not even remotely where I'm actually aiming, and that is because the auto-aim just completely takes over for you. I can't think of another auto-aim system that was so completely over-the-top bonkers in any other first-person shooter I have ever played on console. And you might think that it's a good thing to have in a game as ridiculously fast paced as tribes can be, but unfortunately it actually interferes with your ability to play the game, because the auto-aim is so strong that it goes beyond helping you and actually actively goes against what you're trying to do a lot of the times. You might be trying to line up a shot perfectly, and then all of a sudden your spin fuser disc goes flying off in a direction you had no intention of shooting it because the auto-aim decided to start tracking a completely different enemy. And as the system continues to constantly interfere with your ability to play the game, even though it's trying to, air quotes, help you, you'll go into the options menu to try to turn it off, or at least turn it down, and then you'll immediately find, to your absolute horror, that you can't! There's no option to turn down or turn off the auto-aim. It's just 
permanently on. And of course, because the bots are not restricted by the awful controls or the ridiculous aim assist and are actually quite capable of just hitting you with pinpoint accuracy from halfway across the map, well, let's just say that the experience becomes extremely infuriating extremely quickly. The AI just completely demolishes you at every single turn, and when you're doing something as simple as trying to play a basic capture the flag match, you just can't do it because the controls are constantly getting in your way, on top of you just getting blasted around like a ragdoll. And so we ultimately come back to the original question that I had when going into this thing. Who in the unholy fuck thought this was a good idea? Because not only is it a terrible idea to try to put a Tribes game on console, but the execution of that unfathomably stupid idea ended up being one of the worst console shooters I have ever played. I mean, sure, I can name other games that run like crap, or play like crap, or have numerous glitches, or whatever the case may be, that are console exclusive as well, but they don't seem to go out of their way to actively make the player as miserable as Tribe's Aerial Assault does. Maybe they went into this with good intentions. Maybe they hoped that the aim assist would offset the terrible idea that this game was, but it didn't. It made it worse in every regard, and this ends up becoming effectively unplayable as a result. And because it does that, and because it is so good at just pissing me off, there is absolutely no chance in hell I can recommend this to anyone, even though it is freeware now. Actually, if anything, that makes it worse, because the fact that it is freeware makes it all the more tempting to mess around with, and then once you do that, you realize what a horrible mistake you have made. So you know what? If you want to play a Tribes game and you were considering giving Aerial Assault a try, don't. Avoid it like the plague. On the other hand, if you want to give Tribes 1, which is Star Siege Tribes, Tribes 2, or Tribes Vengeance a try, Go for it! Not only are they much better games than this could ever have hoped to be, but Star Siege Tribes and Tribes 2 both actually still have active communities, albeit very small ones. The best you can really hope to do with Aerial Assault, on the other hand, is play some split-screen against bots, and that's just going to make two people miserable instead of just one. So just don't mess around with Aerial Assault at all. It is not worth it. Thank you all very much for watching, and if you like the kind of videos I make, then please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Every single cent I get from that goes directly back into the channel, whether it be getting additional games for review, or additional equipment, or whatever the case may be. If you can't afford to or don't want to, that's fine, I understand, but the option is there if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in later videos.